eu, 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 I almost burnt my house down. So there's that. Okay, well, I'm sure most of us are familiar with the rough concept of basic historical laundry practices. You know, you take your dirty linens, so your dirty body linens, uh, table linens, bed linens, etc. You put them into boiling water with soap, you scrub them, you lay them out in the, into the sun to dry. There was another type of laundry that was done that was essentially fancy laundry, and it was called clear starching. It could have had a better name. Like, honestly, the marketing behind this really wasn't great. <laughs> and clear starching was this process of washing, starching, and ironing your fancy white bits. The caps that women would wear, the ruffs worn by men and women, the shirt cuffs, the ruffly bits in men's collars, the ruffles in women's gowns. Clear starching actually went all the way up through basically the 20th century. If it was made out of a delicate white fabric like a muslin, a lawn, a sheer sort of cotton or linen fabric, it would go through a clear starching process to clean it, dress it up, and bring it back to life because it was essentially a sign of not only like good hygiene, but essentially I hate making this comparison because people blow this so out of proportion, but it was a sort of status of position and wealth to be able to have continuously extremely clean, white, well-starched, delicate garments around your skin. So around in your hair, around your neck, around your sleeves and your wrists, because those parts of your body were actually touching those fabrics. So they actually could get soiled really, really easily. And so maintaining these garments was really labor intensive. And clear starting was actually done by women. It was done by both free and enslaved women here in the colonies. And it was usually associated with the millinery trade, which was a female dominated trade that was responsible for all the accessories in men's, women's and children's clothing. We're gonna follow this over 300 year old book on how to do clear starching. It is called a plain and easy method for clear starching all manner of muslins, lawns, etc. So we are going to follow this thing as close as humanly possible to see what the hell clear starching actually is, what it looks like, what the results can be, and how easy it actually is. Ever done clear starching before? Absolutely not. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. We're just going on this journey together. I'm just dressed to look the part, okay? I know. And what you guys don't know is I have bright yellow Crocs on because why would I wear real shoes for this? I wouldn't. I'm gonna be comfy. We're business on top, party on the bottom. Let's do it. I actually went to the Springfield Extravaganza in Ohio the other week and I found something very, very cool. This thing. No. What this is, is a goffering iron, a specific type of iron that was used to help set ruffles, like dating back to like, I don't know, the 15th century probably. All right, I have a collection of stuff here. I really should probably wash this and clear starch it, but I don't have another cap that I can wear that I actually like. So we're just going to pretend that this thing's nice and move on. So I have here a 1790s chemisette with lots of ruffles. She definitely, uh, can use some washing because she's wrinkly. This cap that I need to remove the ribbon for. All right, clear starching. A plain and easy method for clear starching. All manners of muslins and lawns, etc. Don't need this page. I don't need you telling me. Here, tell me what to do. Okay, how to wash my muslin. Take very clear water. I underline water because apparently I, I needed to know that. Now, do I know how much water to use? No. Do I know how much soap to use? No. Are we just vibing? Yeah, because it's the 18th century, baby, and that's what they did. Let it not be too hot, for that makes them yellow, and strain the water through a clean cloth into a pan. Then take of the best soap a small quantity. Ooh, that's stinky. As your wash is, and put it upon a clean stick, and so beat up your lather. After the lather is beat up, put in your foulest muslin first, one by one, till you have put them all in, so let them stand to soak out the dirt. This would be a great time to hear a word from our sponsors. Hooray, it's corn chip season. No, not those corn chips. These corn chips. Yikes.
I don't know about you, but I personally don't like smelling like the floor of a food truck during a very questionable festival in the summertime. Luckily though, Native Deodorant is here to take you from stinky to dreamy with their fantastic vegan deodorants that are cruelty-free, aluminum-free, and paraben-free. With so many different scents to choose from, there's definitely something for everyone. Personally, my favorite is the citrus and herbal musk scent followed up closely by coconut and vanilla that offers you up to 72 hours of odor protection so it'll get you through the entire day corn chip free you know what i mean plus they now offer plastic free packaging for all your deodorants the formulas are exactly the same so you get the same wonderful dry texture just with a recyclable package that low-key just looks like a big push pop from the 80s for your stinky bits you know what i mean it's fantastic so if you would like to give Native a try, go ahead and use my code abbycox8 to get 20% off your first order on Native's website. Thanks to Native for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Making soup, making soup. How long are these supposed to soak? I don't really know. How dirty is the water? It's kind of yellow. Yes, that's the point of doing this. Then wash them out one by one. This whole washing, I don't know if that means rinse them, but it doesn't say like to rinse in like a cool water. It just says to wash them. As you wash them out, shake them open into a, the earthen dish. You put them in, then let your second lather be beat up as the first. Only let your water be hotter. Paddle this baby. The water is definitely less yellow and less dingy than the first time. Ow, hot. Hot. Too hot. 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 It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, God. <laughs> well done, Cox. As to the third lather, let your water be scalding hot, but not boiling, for it makes the water yellow. Then take of powdered blue a small quantity. I have liquid because the powder stuff was ridiculous. Put it in a cup and put water to it, then shake the cup about, afterwards pour it into the scalding hot water and stir it about till you perceive it blue enough. So follow your bliss, baby. Then take the soap and beat up your lather as before and put your yellowest muslin in first, then let it be covered over with a clean cloth. You may wash them out whilst warm or let them stand all night. It will do them no harm, but clear them. Okay, so I definitely messed up yesterday. Upon reading the instructions for after this third step, they finally used wash within a context that I understood that they meant rinse. Oops, but luckily the stuff wasn't that dirty, so it's fine, we're driving, it's no big deal. I also, upon further reflection, realized that I used a shit ton of soap for the first couple washes. Um, it's okay, I'm, 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 we're learning here, guys. <laughs> it's fine. Everything looks very actually white and I think it's absorbed the bluing because the water doesn't look that blue anymore. It looks just kind of soapy. Take pump water in a clean pan, then take a small quantity of blue as before, then put your hand in the rinsing water and stir it about. Then put your whitest muslin in first, one by one. After you have rinsed them out, squeeze them one by one between your hands very hard because they will not take the starch if any water is left in them. Some people starch them dry, but this author never does for it makes them look yellow and stiff and is also very apt to fray them. For starch, while I do have Staphlo, which is like the go-to, I want to experiment with using wheat starch. In the 18th century, wheat starch was the most frequent starch from what I can tell. They might have used rice flour for this. I'm really unsure. It just said starch. So based off of my 18th century knowledge, I am defaulting to wheat starch for this. Take a pint of pump water to a quarter of a pound of starch. Put the water in a clean skillet. Oh God and put it over a clear fire until it is lukewarm. Then put in your starch, keep stirring it about slowly, one way, till it boils, one boil, no more. Oh no, it's pulling up crap from my skillet. 
<laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> if it boils too much, it makes it yellow. Then pour it out into a clean pan. Cover it over with a clean plate till it is cold. This pan was not as clean as I thought. When it is cold, take some upon your hand. Take some upon your hand. Oh, I don't like this. And take some blue in the other hand. Then mix them together, but make it not too blue. Oh God, ew. Oh, this is really, this is really un unpleasant. Oh, this is, this is not, not great. This is really bad. This is, this is really, really not fun. Oh God, why did I, ew. Oh, gee. oh my God. Oh, oh, I don't like this. Oh, I hate, oh, I hate this. Oh, oh, I hate this. Oh, that is the thing of nightmares. Oh, okay. Oh, we're just, we're just gonna go with it. Take your muslins doubled as before, one by one in your left hand, and with your right hand, spread the starch upon it not too thick. First on one side, then on the other. Okay. Trust the process, okay. We're, oh, this is awful. This is really not fun. Knead them with your double fist till the starch sticks about your hands. I guess this is? And then, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm hating every part of this. Then wring them out pretty hard. Open this up. Oh no, that was not there. Uh oh, this thing broke. Shit. Okay, well obviously I maybe should not have stirred. That seems to have been actually more aggressive than I thought because we have a split in this chemise that was not there before. That is not good. That is very bad. Then wring them out pretty hard, wiping them with a dry cloth. This is, oh God. Okay, it definitely like, there is a distinct like feel difference between these two and like this feels infinitely better. The method behind the process, I'm understanding now. Like it's starting to make sense. I can see where I've made mistakes. I can see where I would do things differently. A better understanding of what sort of supplies I would actually like want to use and need. You definitely need a lot of stuff. Like you need a lot of towels. You need a lot of dishes. It makes sense why this was considered a skill because this was considered a skill. When you have opened them and rubbed them through your hands, that's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. <laughs> Michael, please. <laughs> Clap them between your hands all together. Clap them very hard, but wash your hands as often as you perceive any starch or wet upon them. That definitely pulls starch. That definitely pulls starch. Okay, so many towels are needed for this. Wow. Be sure your hands are exceedingly dry. For if any of the starch remains on the hands, it will fray the muslin. No shit. But like, if you look at my hands, it almost, you can see like the starch here and a little bit here. It is very rough feeling where I can see how that would cause a problem. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I'm learning serviceable skills in case of an apocalypse. I'm just trying to make my lunch. <laughs> These need to dry. Let's go put these outside and then let them dry for a bit. This clear starching, basically what it does is it creates organdy and it handles just like organdy. It feels like organdy. The finished product is actually, I think, really, really great. That will give me a third degree burn. Oh my gosh. Just gonna... Put you like over there, away from me. Cause I will burn myself. This is cool, this is really cool. Okay, so now <laughs> let's try to figure out this coffering iron. This one's not super, let's just try. Oh 
Oh shit, this is hot. Oh. This is very dangerous. I'm gonna turn you off. I think this is okay. Let's try it down here. That is, it's too hot still. I have singed this cap. I almost set the house on fire. How? Look at the bowl. Oh God. This thing doesn't fuck around. No. Did you have this like set on top of it? Yeah. Oh, it's crunchy. Oh, it is. I, I was like maybe 10, 30 seconds away from. You just have it like resting on top of it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that way I wouldn't accidentally hit it with my arm and, you know. Oh, gotcha. Melt the skin off my bones. Well. Joke's on me. I did not finish goffering ironing the chemisette because I would literally be there all day and it's like almost the end of the work day and obviously I have other stuff I should be doing. This is it. This is clear starching with the goffering iron. Here's how I feel about it. The clear starching. Uh, that actually makes, it, once I put it into practice, it actually made a lot of sense and I, actually like i don't understand necessarily the why behind the process but i understand the process i know what i did wrong i know what i would do differently the next time but the dual soaking three soaks actually did a really good job i think of cleaning everything rubbing it down and kneading it to work the starch into the fibers and then clapping it between your hands i felt very silly doing it but the result was amazing i definitely feel like i got a handle on it i'm not an expert at also don't take me as an expert because that would be a terrible idea. If you guys have any thoughts about how to use the Goffrey iron to its better advantage, I would love to hear it. I think we need to starch things more. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys had a good time. And uh, with that, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you all back here next time with another video. Bye. It's laundry day, bitches. Oh, I can't say that I'll get demonetized. Prolectivities? Prolectivities? Is that the right word, babe? Per Percolate. Anyways. But we ain't gonna spell, smell that like corn chips. <laughs> and I just had a brain fart. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh. Do you want to guess how much the Apple Vision Pro headset is going, like VR, AR is gonna cost? $1,000. No. $100. No. no, not that way. Tree fitty. Well, you're close. That is zero. $3,500. $3,500 for a fucking pair of... For a VR, AR, AR headset. I will say... Billionaires need to go jump off. Yeah, you. Do, 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 do. You making my dreams come true. Do, 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 do. Yeah, 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 you. You making my dreams come true. Doo -doo.